Hi there, beloved of God. Welcome to this video. We'll continue immediately with our series called Conciliation and Reconciliation. How deep does the change go? Very important. This was the last slide and we talked about Israel as an example of course and also as God's guinea pig obviously that received the law in order to increase transgressions but what happened is that after they rejected the evangel Saul of Tarsus pagan Tarsus comes into the picture can you believe that then the leaders of Israel who rejected the evangel they they put their mantles with him <laughs> and mantle is a sign of glory in scripture so this is fantastic how illustrative, illustrative it is and also of course israel it it symbolizes israel stripping herself of her own glory yeah that's what happened but it's temporary of course and that glory then temporarily comes to saul <laughs> it's oh god is the director of everything and everything has um what do you how do you say that i would say si symbolics whether we know it or not so we continue with the next slide so the conciliation of the world is the current evangel in our days so the, our evangel is the evangel of the conciliation and of course also and that also it's it's on this under the same umbrella of salvation of of course so conciliation is the i would say the ending result uh and we will go through that also later the ending result of god's plan and god's program with the whole world including israel of course then there is no distinction anymore in that sense so when the consummation has been attained then the world is conciliated and even reconciliated to god that is fantastic so the conciliation of the world is the current evangel in our days so the body of christ members uh, we have the evangel of conciliation that we can herald to everyone who wants to hear however it is much rejected and denounced by religion especially by christianity again and i can tell you especially even the the evangelicals they are hell bent against uh, reconciliation they call it a false teaching oh yes so think about it what do they have if they call the reconciliation of the world with God and with each other if they call that a false teaching whoa man then you are far from home I can assure you that uh, just a, a step back please look at these passages if you want uh, to see the function of a mantle as an image of glory let's uh, read further in Romans 11 28 where it says as to the evangel indeed they the people of israel are enemies because of you the nations yet as to choice they are beloved because of the fathers god has chosen israel long time ago to be his people and it started with abram the promise to Abram and now Israel for almost 2000 years now has been put in abeyance and God is busy with a totally different program that has been kept a total secret in the Hebrew scriptures no one no prophet no um, um, judge etc could even um, um, what is the word think or imagine such a program of uh, with of god with the nations and that's what's happening today and that program is even higher 
not just higher, but much higher. God's program with the nations. The nations also have a higher calling, a higher glory. Why? Because the core of the evangel of Paul to the nations, the core has God's true heart. And it is a true spiritual message, while Israel's message is a soulish message. Israel's blessings in the a thousand years will be a soulish blessing on earth, while our blessing of the body of Christ, who are the result, the fruit of the evangel of Paul, will have a spiritual blessing or blessings in the celestials among the celestials so that's a huge difference by the way the evangel of israel does not show god's true heart because it has condition in it conditional aspects very important god's true heart is unconditional love of which grace is the highest display all right, so it's all about who God is, the love of God. Let's read a very important passage again. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 14 through 15. For the love of Christ is constraining us, judging this, that if one died for the sake of all, consequently all died. Let's stop here. This can only be working if one died for the sake of all, consequently all die. If I would die for the sake of you or for the sake of the world, would the world have died with me? No, of course not. And that applies to you also and to everyone in the world except Christ Jesus why that that's why i said here this is only possible this statement if it is the right one that one who died for the sake of all if it's the right one what is the right one we know it's christ jesus but why is he the right one it's very simple according to colossians 1 16 um, all has been created in him all has been created by God in Christ, in Him, so that He encompasses all. So if He dies, all that are in Him have also died, spiritually also died. So that is the, that is the meaning of this statement right here. Hope you understand. We continue. And he died for the sake of all, that those who are living should by no means still be living to themselves, but to the one dying and being roused for their sakes. Why not? Because not only are we not of ourselves, we are slaves, we are the ownership of Christ Jesus. Did you know that? He is our owner because he is Lord. Lord comes from the Greek word kurios and kurios means owner. So he has been, um, um, what is the word, appointed kurios by, of course, by his father, by his God and father. So think about it. We are slaves of Christ. Why did Christ die? From our perspective, he died as a victim of enmity. And that is totally true. But from God's perspective, Christ died to be raised, in order to be raised. Him who died for them, for all, and rose again by the power of God, of course by Holy Spirit. That's the power of God. So, Christ died in order to be raised, of course. 
you have to die a seed must die in order to yield a new life and much fruit through adam death became the part of all humanity you know that right all humanity no exception right so through christ the la who is the last adam that same humanity receives life let's read about it and let's see if it's true first corinthians 15 21 22 very impo very important and very well-known passage for since in fact through a man came death that's adam through a man also comes the resurrection of the dead that's jesus for even as listen to the words even as even as in adam all are dying thus also you see the even as and also in christ shall all be vivified because of the even as and the thus also we know that both ends of the equations are exactly the same the all who are dying are the same all as the all who are being vivified in christ okay so how does god conciliate the world to himself remember that god's plan and the methods that he uses are impeccable of course everything has been calculated and thought through thoroughly and forward so how does god conciliate the world to himself simple by not reckoning their offenses to them not reckoning their offenses to them however just let's stop here however how because the world doesn't even realize for the biggest part that they are en en enemies of god they don't, e don't even realize it it is in their um in their subconsciousness even or even in their unconsciousness so how will it happen of course he will first convict the world of sin and also of righteousness and of judgment that's what will happen you can also read that uh, it's a it's an uh, it's an overarching truth and you can read about that in john 16 verse 8 and 9 i think so that's how god is conciliating the world to himself he will make them conscious of who they really are toward god toward god they are enemies toward god and then he will let them know that he doesn't reckon their offenses to them he is showering them with love the world wrongfully condemned jesus they beat him scorched scorched him mocked him nailed him to the tree etc but from the cross the prayer of jesus sounded father forgive them for they are not aware of what they are doing and father forgive forgave the world he forgave the world and he doesn't reckon uh, he doesn't reckon their offenses to them indeed they didn't know what they were doing but god sure did know what he was doing everything planned in advance god gave up his only begotten son to provide the ultimate proof of his love to the world he doesn't blame the world for its offenses because that is precisely how he conciliates the world to himself so he shows the ultimate proof think about think about that when the world had sunk to its deepest possible level by 
killing God's only son, the most pure being in the universe. At that same moment, God showed the pinnacle of his love for the same uh, um, world in enmity. That is how God did it. And the world, I will assure you, the world will know this. They will realize this. It will really sink in deep. So, thus, in this way, God is heaping embers of fire upon the head of a hostile world. As Romans 12, 20 says, the end result will be nothing short from magnificent. That is for sure. Let's look at an example in scripture and then we will end this video. Joseph, the best example, of course. Undoubtedly, the most beautiful illustra illustration of conciliation is found in the story of Joseph, who is a type of Christ. I think the best type of Christ in the Hebrew scriptures. Loved by his father, Jacob, rejected by his brothers, same as Jesus ends up in a pit you could say it resembles the grave is believe joseph was believed to be dead by jacob he stays incognito incognito outside the country and he reaches a position at the top over there so you could say in the heavens right now where where christ is seated at the right hand of god the majesty Driven by famine, the brothers come to Egypt and Joseph gives them bread. Knowing who they are, they didn't rec recognize Joseph first. But Joseph knew who they are and he gives them bread. After much back and forth, Joseph finally makes himself known to his completely perplexed and terrified brothers. Joseph didn't reckon the crimes of his brothers against them. For it was precisely through their crime that God would save them. So God was in perfect control also in that shit situation as always down to every detail. This is fantastic. Let's read about it quickly. Genesis 45, verse 5, 7, and 8. So Joseph says and to his brothers, And now do not be grieved, nor let it be hot in your eyes that you sold me hither, because Elohim has sent me on before you for the preservation of life. But Elohim sent me on before you to set up for you a remnant on earth and to preserve lives for you in a great deliverance. Exactly what happened. And verse 8, So now not you send me here, but the one, Elohim. Isn't that fantastic? And this picture is I think the most beautiful picture in the Hebrew scriptures of conciliation and I could even say reconciliation in that sense in a relative sense of course well I'll, I'm going to leave it um, at this video at this slide again <laughs> sorry um, so I'm going to end this video but next time I will continue and I thank you much for watching see you next time